beautiful Sunday morning to you. Praise God for the privilege of worship. Thank God he has brought us together. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> but we're very happy to be in the house of God on this very first Sunday of this new month. Let's worship God. Let's give him thanks. Let's praise him for all the manifested blessings we have received from his hand. Let's spend some time opening our hearts, opening our lives, asking God to help us to worship him. Let's pause for a moment of meditation as we wait on the spirit of God to hover over us. And the songwriter says, hover over us, Holy Spirit. Fill our trembling hearts and brow. Fill us with your hallowed presence, come, oh come, and fill me now. We thank you, dear Lord, for our spirit lives, for the blessed privilege of coming into your house. We thank you for the week that has gone into eternity, never to return. All the experiences and the challenges and the activities of the past week, you have them under cover. And so we come with this fresh, thought in our hearts that you are the God of today, tomorrow, and even the years to come. You are in eternity while we are in time. Bless your worshiping children who are bowed in your presence. We thank you for all that you've done, for all that you will do in this service, for your glory, for those who are here in the congregation, and for those who are streaming with us. Thank you, thank you, Thank you for sparing our lives and permitting us to be here in fellowship. Accept our worship and the contents of our hearts, for we ask these mercies in your son's name. We say amen, amen, amen. Let's stand as we do our responsive reading. It says uh, Christian conduct. Let's read responsively. And again, therefore, Jesus spake unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. As therefore ye received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him, established in your faith, even as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. If we live by the Spirit, by the Spirit let us also walk. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Be therefore imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, even as Christ hath also loved you, and gave himself for, up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for an odor of sweet 
smelling. Look, there Look therefore carefully, carefully how you are, walk. Not, not as unwise, unwise but, but as wise. wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. For this, For this is the will of God, God even, even your, your sanctification, sanctification, that ye abstain from, from fornication. fornication. For God called us not unto uncleanness, but unto into sanctification. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and make, make not no provision for the flesh, flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. To walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory, unto all patience and long suffering with joy. Praise God. May God bless the reading of his words. Let's Amen. worship the Lord in song. Let's open our hearts as his spirit flows through us. Good morning, church. Let's open our hymnals. We, we are going to sing um, hymn number 489. We're marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord. Join in the song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne. different direction because the dad wanted to explore new ground so they are going through different houses different streets on familiar faces and he asked the daughter do you know where you are she says no daddy do you know how to 
go, get home from here. She says, no, daddy. And she, he says, you must be a brave little girl because you don't know where you are. You don't know how to get home from here, but yet you're not afraid. She said, no, daddy, it's not that. I don't have to be afraid because I'm with you. <laughs> so some of us, be marching through this life, we don't remember that God is with us. We are bearing our own burdens. We are going through challenges ourselves. But God says, I am with you. We forgot that God is there for us. So let's this morning tap into God's strength. Let's be with him. Amen. Whatever we are going through. Because it's, he says in Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Amen. 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 You are my strength. Let's yes. tell God you are my strength. Are I'm not doing strength. this alone. You are my strength. Amen. 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 This is a new song. You are my strength. Strength like no
sing again. It reaches. For it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows. And it flows to the lowest valley. The love that gives me strength. take care of you. Let's sing it together with assurance of God's presence. Be not dismayed whatever time God will take care of you. Oh. 
thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that you have been there with us. You've been there when we were going through the floods and we were going through the storms. God, when our hearts were wondering where next to turn, when our eyes were blinded by the forces of the enemy, God, you were present with us. God, we thank you we thank you that there is none other like you. None who is able to strengthen. None who is able to, to comfort. None who is able to be with us, O oh God, in spite of all of the darkness that surround us. You are a wonderful God. You are a great God, and we worship you today. God, we magnify you, for thou art great and marvelous and wonderful. Thou art God, and there is none other like you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bring ourselves to you today, Lord. We acknowledge our weaknesses. We acknowledge, O oh God, that at times we may be wandering, we may be lost. 
But today we give ourselves again to you and we pray that you would take care of us. Take control of us. Oh God, lead us in the paths that you would have us to go and give us the strength and the willingness to walk in those paths. God, we commit your people to you today. Strengthen our hearts. Strengthen our will. Strengthen, oh God, our desires to serve you. May we walk in your light Walk in your paths. May we be blessed by you for having given ourselves to you. We pray, God, that you would continue to pour your blessings upon us today in this worship session. Bless us. Bless our singing, our praying, and our preaching. God, our fellowship, Bless us. May our worship in this place today, O oh God, be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name I pray. We come into his house. We gather in his name. That is to worship him. There's no other reason that we gather. We're not a social club, but we are a spiritual family coming together, one mind, one heart, one spirit, one soul. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Delighted that we can gather in our sanctuary, unhindered, uninterrupted, that we could come and focus on the things of God and the blessings of God. And I trust each one of you weren't forced to come, but you're happy to come. I'm delighted to have you in our midst. Do I say welcome? I'm this vantage point. I see all our members and friends and gathered. But if there's someone who I might have omitted to um, welcome you and you're here, maybe for the first time or second time, just give me a wave so I can recognize you. If I don't see any waves, then we all are a part of this family of God gathered here to worship. Just a couple of reminders. Um, you've got your bulletin. Please don't leave them in the pews. Take them with you. Stick them on your refrigerator. Remind you of the times that are coming up. Um, normally on Sundays... At 10 o'clock in the morning, we have our teaching ministry in the Edith Oram Fellowship Hall. It's gathered together around that special teaching time. Various aspects of the ministry of the word is spoken and discussed. So join us. Free time of discussion. It's a learning time in our teaching ministry. Then we come up to the sanctuary for our family worship hour, family worship time. And this is what we're doing here this morning. We are worshiping, worshiping together as the family of God. So delighted, appreciated, happy that you can be here. And for those who are streaming, we thank you for tuning in. We may have some kinks along the way, but we iron them out. So don't leave us, join us, invite others to join and as we fellowship through our streaming. And then on Wednesday, <clears throat> we have, a, I call it Community Bible Hour, Community Bible Study. And we are studying the book of Colossians. We're studying the fourth chapter of the book of Colossians. Read it. Join us in the Zoom. It's on um, the overhead, btlm.org. And then the password is BTLM Bible. There are many who are part of this, so join them, join us as we come to fellowship together. And during the week, uh, we've got our praise and worship practice session. And that's 5 o'clock on Thursdays. Every Thursday, special notice given if there's a change. So keep that in mind. 
And then next Sunday is the second Sunday, Valentine's Sunday. I'm certainly reminded um, we come to fellowship. But also at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, a women's power hour where the women get together and they share their activities of what's going on and what's happening in their lives. So join them. It's there on the uh, board. Um, you get the idea of how to join, how to be a part of it. So please join them. On Saturdays, every Saturday, there is that um, what, we, what, what we would call Sweet Hour of Prayer Conference, uh, the different names used. But every Saturday at 1 o'clock, the ladies and men gather together and you have special tune in. You can be a, give prayers, give requests, give testimony. And what I know is a beautiful time of meeting and sharing. Just one hour. So one hour given to that special time where we can meet together in prayer. We do meet as a leadership team on February the 18th at 6 p.m. that Friday in the Edith Oram Fellowship Hall. So join us as we plan for the year ahead. Any input you want, email me, give me a text. We can add to our agenda so that we can move on as a church. I do want to commend um, Joed and the um, young, young Adult Ministries for their movie night. <laughs> you want to make any comments, Joed? If you want to say something, feel free. Let him be the one to make the acknowledgement. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, church. Um, movie night was a huge success. We had around 26-ish, maybe more. I couldn't really count people that showed up. We were all packed downstairs. It was full. It was amazing. Um, so thank you to everybody that came. Thank you to everybody that helped in some sort of way, shape, or form. Um, pardon? Oh, Sister Dan, for the food. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm a little slow this morning. Yes, for the food. Everybody actually, I got text messages saying the food was amazing. Yeah, so that was amazing. So thank you for that. And if you didn't help in some sort of way, there's going to be more youth events during the year, and I expect you to reach out to me to be a part of it, to be a part of the ministry. People's lives were touched, and we're trying to start something. We're trying to make it so that the youth understand that they're not alone and that we can feel together in the body of Christ. Um, and as a church, I think that's our mission. So please join and reach out and be a part of our ministry. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think those covered the announcement. I hope I haven't omitted any, what's in the bulletin and what's not. But we're certainly glad that you could come to fellowship. It's your time to give, to participate, to say to God, thank you. How do we do that? Various ways. You can give God of your tithes and offering right in the congregation. You can send your tithes through PayPal. You can write uh, your tithes in an envelope. And you can put it in a, um, put it, send it to the church. We, the address is here. Uh, 4915 Edgewood Road, College Park, MD 20740. Send your tithe. Give God. I'm sure, I'm sure he will welcome all that we are given to him. Let's stand as we wait on you and we have a word of prayer for your offerings and your tithes. As you give it back to God, may he give you more in abundance. Father, we thank you for all the tithers, small or great, whatever they give, we give it unto you. And so we pray that your anointing would be upon each member, each individual, each person, each streamer they can send. Let's give back to you what you have shared with us. We can never, never outgive you, dear God. Accept the tithing of our hearts, those who have to give and those who didn't have to give. And may we worship you, may we give cheerfully, may we gladly do this for you. You have done so much for us. We ask these mercies in Christ's name. Praise the Lord. This song has a little move. 
our my African people. We are all it's Black History Month, by the way. So we turn around. You're gonna move. Who has the final say? Is Jehovah. Amen. The final say, Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say, Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns my life around, Jehovah turns my life around. He makes the way where the seas no way, Jehovah. Thank God that we are able to come into his house and dance around, turn around. You know, I saw Joed trying to turn around. I don't know how he was going to do it with <laughs> under drums. <laughs> but we thank God that we are all worshiping one father. A God who loves us all and requires from us all that he acts, he requires us to do. Some time ago, the Lord, around the end of the last year, the Lord directed my thoughts to the subject of holy living. And you may have noticed that I've been sharing on this particular theme for some time now. I have shared on the thought of the attitude for holy living. I have shared on the atmosphere for holy living. And today, as God would have me, I'm sharing on the activities of holy living. For our time together, I have chosen the passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and beginning to read at verse 17 through 26. Stand with me as we read it together. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do not do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. 
No doubt they have no difference to show which you have God's approval. No doubt when you come together, it is at the Lord's Supper that you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and others get drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall, what shall I, say I say to you? you? Shall, shall I praise, praise you? you? Certainly, Certainly not, not in this, in this matter. matter. For, For I, received I received from the Lord what I what also, I also passed, passed on to you. you. The Lord Jesus, on the, the night, night he was betrayed, betrayed took bread, bread, and when, when he, he had given thanks, thanks he, he broke, broke it and said, This, this is my body, which is for you. Lord. This do, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the, the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. We pray your blessings upon this time together, O God. May your word come alive in our hearts. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I've chosen the passage of scripture today because, partially because it's the day we, we have chosen to celebrate the Lord's Supper. But more so because in this passage, the Apostle Paul is giving the church at Corinth a lesson in how they ought to behave themselves. To my mind, it, it speaks not only to a time of com coming together at communion, but what seems should be their adopted manner of living as professing Christians. The Lord's Supper, like baptism, is an outward and a visible sign of an inward and divine grace. This is passed on to us by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. One person has said it is a good representation of the good news of Christ's death for our sins and should remind us of his glorious return. When we participate in the event, it should be seen as a source of strength strength to our faith through the fellowship of the saints and our communion with Christ. In our passage, beginning at verse 19, Paul makes reference to a situation that existed in the church at Corinth. You see, when it was time for the Lord's Supper, there was a fellowship meal. It was either before the Lord's Supper, which was in preparation for that event, or it followed the Lord's Supper. 
But at this time, the people would gather for this fellowship meal. And as Paul heard it, whether it was reported to him or he actually saw it, it seemed as though it had become a very unholy affair. In the sense that there were some who had a lot to eat, and there were others who went hungry. Paul condemned these actions, not so much because they were gathering, and not so much because they were a part of a fellowship, but he condemned what was going on within the fellowship. There was no love. There was no caring. If you came to the fellowship meal and you felt like eating all that there was, you did it. In other words, there were some who were feasting sumptuously. And there were those who were hungry. Those who had nothing to drink. And as the word says, there were those who were getting drunk. And Paul condemned this, atmos this attitude. The activities of holy living does not include selfishness. It does not include greed. It includes caring and comforting. It includes respect and fellowship with one another. Let me begin by sharing this thought. The activities of holy living are conditioned by the remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Christ says in the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 19, and also in our passage today, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 24, says, do this in reference to the Lord's Supper, do this in remembrance of me. Communion is a time when we come together as children of God, and our focus is on Christ. So that when we remember Christ in the Lord's Supper, we focus on what he has done for us. The early church would remember that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper on the night of the Passover meal. The message for us in this thought is that just as the Passover celebrated the deliverance of the, of, from slavery in Egypt, the Lord's Supper should be a celebration of our deliverance from sin by Christ's death on the cross. If we ever lose sight of this sacrifice of Christ, communion becomes just a pious habit. And it is no longer a celebration of Christ and will have no impact upon our everyday conduct. You see, some of us dress 
better than we dress for communion, than we dress for other times for communion Sunday. I remember as a young boy growing up in the church, it was the day when the men turn up in their black suits and their white shirts and their black ties. And the ladies would be dressed in their all white dresses. Where are the white dresses today? <laughs> but the ladies would be dressed in their white dresses. Some of them long white dresses. And that was considered the dress for Communion Sunday. But if we lose sight, as I said before, of the sacrifice of Christ, that is all that it becomes. A pious habit, a Sunday when we dress up, when we look our best, but yet we lose the real meaning of the celebration. That is why some of us are able to leave the communion table and go right back into life as usual. Doing the same thing, the same things, the same way, and they have no impact on us. Verse 23 and verse 24 and 25 says, the teaching here is that we do not see these emblems as just wafers and grape juice, but we see them as representing the sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf. Paul was shocked by the behavior of these people, their selfishness, their gluttonous behavior, and their drunkenness, despise the church of God, and it shames the poor. He says to them, don't you have houses that you can eat in? You see, it was such a disgraceful behavior that they were coming just to feast. Here is the thought. An intentional focus on the cross and the sacrifice of Christ should have an impact on our conduct in life. For as we focus on the sacrifice, it should direct the way that we conduct ourselves. One little chorus that used to sing says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my weary soul cries out, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord for saving me. So when we come in to communion service or the Lord's Supper, whatever you refer to it as, it must be a time where the focus is on the sacrifices that Christ made and continue to make. The activities of holy living are conditioned by our remembrance of what Christ did for us. His death must mean something to us. And if you have not reached a point where this is the case, maybe you shouldn't take communion. Here is my second point. The activities of holy living are confirmed in the relationship of what Christ is doing for us. It's a focus on what he did. It's a revelation of what he is doing. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 says, 
reminds us, the children of God, that we are buried with Christ so that we may live a new life. In verse 20 and 21 of our text, Paul condemns the type of behavior that was going on in, in the fellowship meal because it was not pleasing to God and was therefore not a revelation of, of Christ. The actions reflected selfishness, as I said, disrespect, and a lack of care, and this does not lend itself, these behaviors does not lend themselves to activities of holy living. In Colossians chapter 3, in the first three verses, we are, Paul reminds us that we have been raised with Christ, and we shall set our minds on things above, for our lives are now hidden with Christ in God. And we slip down in that same chapter, the verses 5 to 8, uh, the, the, the thought is here that the entire, and matter of fact, the entire chapter talks about the, the pattern that is set. And down in verse 15, the highlight of these instructions, here it is recorded as Paul wrote, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. We have been called to peace. The Lord's Supper brings with it the idea of fellowship. A fellowship with your fellow men, your brothers and your sisters. This is the kind of union, the kind of communion that must exist at this time. Where we have sweet as the old folks used to say, we have sweet fellowship with one another. As if you didn't have sweet fellowship that no other day. But that was an expression. But it surely does and should reflect a fellowshipping of the saints. And as I mentioned earlier, a commu we communion with, with God. Romans chapter 12, verse 18, challenges us that as much as is within our power, live peaceably with all men. If we reach a point where we follow this instruction, communion and fellowship will be real. Because we would look beyond some of the things that we focus on and we look at our brothers and sisters as human beings, as our brothers and as our sisters, and we are willing to commune with them. We willingly reach out, we willingly hug, we shake hands, we kiss. All because we are doing what God requires of us to do and our coming together around the Lord's table is an expression of this. It is a picture of what Christ continues to do for us. He brings us into a family we become united in this body, into the family of God. And as we live for God, and as we live for our fellow brothers and sisters, and as that fellowship is reflected from us, it is a beautiful picture of what Christ continues to do for us. And those on the outside 
looking in and seeing how we are behaving and seeing how we are reflecting the goodness of God and seeing how we are reflecting what Christ is doing with us, they too would be drawn to us and pointed to Christ. That this is what God requires of us. Fellowship. Back in the early church, the people on the outside said, Behold how they love each other. And there is nothing that will draw men and women to Christ like the expression of love among the children of God. Here is a final thought. The activities of holy living are contained with regard to the return, the second return of Christ. Here in chapter, in the passage that we're looking at, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, Paul reveals another purpose for observing the Lord's Supper. He says it is a proclamation of Christ's death for our sins. But built into that proclamation is the promise that Christ will one day return. The Lord's Supper involves both a looking back to the cross and the examination of our present living, present relationship, and our looking forward to Christ's imminent return to earth. In verse 26, he says, whenever you do this, whenever you come to the Lord's table, you do show or proclaim the Lord's death. And the suggestion here is that we must so conduct ourselves as those who know what we must do to show forth or to validate the death and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, until he comes again. The meaning here is that this observance is to never cease being a part of the church's practice. Regardless of how long you may live, regardless of how long things may go on, the, the communion service, the Lord's Supper, must always be a part of the church's ritual until he comes again. Within this, there is a challenge. The challenge is that since it is the fact that one day Christ will return to judge his people, an understanding and an acceptance of that truth should reflect holy living. For he has said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. See, if we concern ourselves then with the fact that the holy God, whose holy Son sets forth Holiness as the way of life will return to receive a holy people, then that should have an impact on the way we conduct ourselves. Christ said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. He said, I will return, and as we come into the Lord's Supper, as we come into communion service, this thought must occupy our minds. 
And if we can accept it, if we can understand it, that one day Christ is going to come to receive us, we would want to live as holy people. We observe the Lord's Supper. We come into communion with regards to the fact that one day he will return. Let me conclude with this. David Watson, in his book, I Believe in Evangelism, records a statement from one John Scott, who stated, and I quote, if the cross, Christ, uh, or Christ's death, is not central in our thinking, it is safe to say that our faith, whatever it be, is not Christian faith. Or our creed, whatever it be, is not the Apostles' Creed. In other words, if you are not living the life in Christ, it is not holy living. If you are not conducting yourself with a clear vision of what Christ requires, it is not holy living. The Lord's Supper reminds us to keep the cross of Jesus Christ central. He says, do this. And whenever you do it, do it in remembrance of me. In other words, with a focus on Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his coming again. And if we can focus on these things, it will have an impact on the way we behave ourselves. So I challenge you to come. Come to communion as often as you can. Come with love for others. Come in remembrance of the Lord and examination of yourself. It gives us frequent reminder that we need to deal with ourselves and our sin as it relates to holy living before the Lord. That's why Paul said, let a man examine himself. Let the Holy Spirit examine us all. That as we come, our focus will be right. Our relationships will be right. And our living would be right. Pray with me. Father, thank you for the challenge of your word. Thank you, O oh God, for reminding us of the importance Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which was broken for you. 
After the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, he gave all to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which was shed for you. This do in remembrance of me. Father, we are grateful that you have allowed us to come together at this time. We are praying that our fellowship together would please you, it would glorify you, and that we would go out from here to live as you would have us to. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. was broken for you and be thankful. This cup represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was shed for you. Drink this 
in remembrance of Christ's blood, which was shed for you, and be thankful. Father, we thank you for this precious moment that come together in a communion fellowship. Surround each one of us with the halo of your presence. Grant us that special anointing to pass at the airport. May we constantly remember you, remind us of you, and may we keep you in front of us. Accept our thanks for these precious moments together. We pray these mercies in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to sing our closing hymn. It's hymn number 475, Christ Returneth. It may be at morn when the day is awakened.
Praise God. I trust we are ready. Amen. Having listened to the word, I trust your hearts are encouraged. Having shared together communion, I trust we are bonded that when Christ does return, all God's people will go to meet him. Amen. Father, dismiss us with your richest blessing. Take us to our respective homes in peace and safety. Bring us back on Wednesday night to worship you in Bible study. And for the following Sunday, we gather together, should our lives be spared, to share in wonderful service and fellowship and togetherness as God's people. We ask these mercies in Christ's name. And God's amen. people say, amen. amen and amen. God bless you each. What I long for Holiness It's what I need Holiness Holiness It's what you want For me For me
what I know I need. Oh, 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 holiness is what you want for me. I'm gonna be holy. Yes, you want. 